Uh, first of all, uh, thank you to the organizers for the opportunity to speak in this meeting. I think we'd like them to be here. So, uh, um, the general goal is to present some geometric aspects of the slow Hamiltonian systems of the, of the abiotic time uh, on general phase spaces with symmetry. Uh, the results that I want to present you are the, the product on some several joint works with Jose Antonio Vallejo and Euro Bioff on computing higher order corrections on, for slow fast Hamiltonian systems. Uh, our approach is based, in, is based on the coupling method for Poisson structure. This method was introduced by Borobiev. And the theory of Hanaiberry connections on fiber bundles. And this theory is well known that was developed by Marsden, Ratio, and Montgomery in the paper Reduction, Symmetry, and Phases on Dynamics. So I want to, to highlight that one main uh, observation is that an adiabatic Hamiltonian system can be regarded as a perturbed system of a Poisson fiber bundle associated with a, a, a horizontal deformation of a vertical Poisson structure. So, uh, this gives rise to a link between the deformation theory of Poisson structures and the adiabatic perturbation theory on general fiber manifold. Uh, well, the, the real question is, uh, why can I do with this observation? Uh, I'm going to answer this question during, during my talk. Uh, I will start with a, with a brief and non-exhaustive review of adiabatic systems. And I just want to highlight some uh, facts about, about the systems and some uh, well-known results. Uh, these systems uh, arise because there are many problems that lead to the analysis of Hamiltonian dynamics where one can distinguish motions of two times, of two types, slow motions and fast motions. Uh, the adiabatic invariance is a remarkable phenomenon which can be presented in, in such class of systems. Uh, recall that an adiabatic invariant is a quantity which changes but as small enough along the trajectories of the slow Hamiltonian systems on large time intervals. A general framework for adiabatic invariance is settled by the slow fast Hamiltonian systems. For example, consider a Hamiltonian system on R4, for simplicity, with a Hamiltonian function H and with a Poisson structure uh, Psi Epsilon, this one. We should know that here appears a, a parameter epsilon, and from norm epsilon will be a, a small parameter. So we can consider this, this bivector <laughs> as a perturbation of, of this part. Uh, so the, the equations of motions for this Hamiltonian yeah. are this, these equations. And we can recognize that these pairs of equations evolve faster than the other ones, because we, ha we have here uh, the parameter epsilon that we are considering this is a small parameter. Now, as under which hypothesis we can assert the existence of adiabatic invariance? Oh, a well-known result is that we can, uh, that if we impose the following symmetry hypothesis that for every frozen volumes or Pain Q, the plane Yx is foliated by closed phase cures of H. We can assert the existence. Uh, we can reinterpret this, this symmetry of hypothesis in the following way. If we consider the, the, ha the Hamiltonian vector field associated to this function, uh, we can say that, the, that this is a perturbed Hamiltonian vector, vector field where the unperturbed vector field uh, has periodic flow. Uh, and this hypothesis allows to introduce uh, a parameterized uh, action angle variables and use this change to coordinates uh, and, and write down these, these, these equations in these variables. And the classical results from Arnold and Neistat is that the action va variable 
is anadiabatic invariant. No? That's it. Uh, yt, xt, pt, qt is a solution of the Hamiltonian system, and we have uh, these estimations for epsilon uh, small enough. No? Uh, this is well known that these results reliance on the normalization procedure and the averaging principle do the work. No? So uh, I, I want to to use the the observation that mentioned that mentioned before to find uh, a normalization procedure. This is one of my of my goals. Uh, so um, now I, I I want to to explain how appears the deformation theory in the context of the slow fast Hamiltonian systems. Uh, first, we consider again the the, the bi vector field psi epsilon equal p plus epsilon q, where p is this bi vector, q is that bi vector. And we can see that if we compute the scouting bracket of p with his self, I recall that scouting bracket is a it's a generalization for multivectors of the ordinary Lie bracket for vector fields. We obtain that this, that this uh, uh, bracket is zero, and the bracket of P with Q is also zero. And this is uh, that it means that C, the epsilon is a deformation of the by vector P, and P is a Poisson vector field. Uh, Moreover, if we consider the trivial fiber bundle, where P is the projection of the over the first factors, and the trivial connections on this fiber bundle, we can uh, see that P is a vertical by vector field, and Q is a horizontal by vector field. So we can uh, throw this by vector field as a horizontal perturbation of a vertical by vector field. No? And uh, if we take uh, smooth functions and compute the Hamiltonian vector fields, we can uh, see the, the vector field as a perturbation of a vertical vector field. No? This is just uh, put in this, in this area. No? Uh, in order to, to formulate uh, the results, I, I, I will uh, present some, some preliminary uh, uh, concepts. Uh, for infinitesimal deformations, we consider uh, a Poisson manifolds, that is a, a smooth manifolds, uh, where P, e with P is a, a vector fields which satisfies these conditions. Uh, the Scott and bracket of, the, of P with itself is equal to zero. Uh, uh, as you know, uh, given a bi vector field, we can uh, define uh, morphies of vector bundles from T star E to, T to the tangent. And this allows. Uh, Define the Hamiltonian or write the Hamiltonian vector fields uh, using this this, morph this morphism, no? as follow, and uh, we can also define uh, a co-boundary operator, the number delta p. Uh, this these operators uh, act on the space of multivector fields. It takes a k multivector fields and sense in the k plus one vector fields uh, by this formula. Uh, and these conditions and the property of the Scott and brackets, we can uh, prove that we have these conditions. So we can define uh, a cohomology to this operator. This, this cohomology is, is known as poisson lichnerovich cohomology uh, as the usual form. In particular, uh, the, first the first class of this cohomology is given by the, the space of, of vector fields, of Poisson vector fields, that's it. X is a Poisson vector field. If the derivative of P along X is equal to zero, 
uh, quotients by the Hamiltonian vector fields. And the second class of this Quasson cohomology is the infinitesimal deformation of P. A infinitesimal deformation is a bivector field on E such that the scotten bracket of P with Q is equal to zero. Quotient with the trivial, with the trivial cosicos, no? well, with the trivial uh, trivial cosico, no? and Q is a trivial to cosicle if Q is equal delta P of Y for some vector field. Okay. It's clear by the property that this immediately is a, a deformation of Q. No? Now, uh, I, I will introduce uh, some symmetry hypothesis. Uh, we shall assume that we have a, the action of a compact connected Lie group of E. Uh, with this action, we can define, uh, we can define the, the space of G invariant tensor fields as the tensor fields that satisfies uh, these relations. No? Uh, and also we can define the G averaging of an arbitrary tensor field. No? Uh, the G averaging of a tensor is given by this formula, where this is the hard measure. No? And it, this is also well known that the G averaging is a projector over the space of G invariant tensor fields. Uh, now let me set a uh, G invariant geometric problem for by vector fields. No? Uh, we consider a Poisson fiber, a Poisson fiber bundle. A Poisson fiber bundle is a pair consisting of a fiber bundle and P, a vertical Poisson fiber bundle. Recall that the vertical distribution is the kernel of the, of the tangent mat of pi. No? So uh, let Q be a two cycle, and as previously, we define the deformation of pi, uh, C, C epsilon. We shall assume that the action is uh, canonical and preserving the fibers of the, of the fiber. No? And we also assume that the action is locally Hamiltonian. A is a uh, an element of the, GL, of the Lie algebra of the group. And we should know the following. We know that P is G invariant, but Q in general, in general is not, so neither is C epsilon. So we have the following problem. Find a near identity transformation tau epsilon from a G invariant uh, open domain of A, such that uh, the pullback uh, of psi epsilon along tau epsilon uh, brings me to this bivector field or brings me to another deformation of pi but where the q bar is now g invariant. This is a problem. No? If such transformation exists it, it is called uh, normalization transformations and this will be called the g invariant fields over or g invariant fields order normal form of psi epsilon. Uh, the answer to the problem is affirmative if we can find a Poisson connection such that Q is horizontal. Uh, uh, recall that a, Poisson, that a Poisson connection is an Ehrenman connection uh, such that the horizontal leaf of any vector field is a Poisson vector field. It's the only condition that I have. That I have that I ask, uh, uh, and under these uh, conditions, we can, we can also average the connection. By this formula, this is the han ivory connection. Uh, as consequence of, of the previous hypothesis, uh, as, uh, as Alejandro mentioned yesterday, if we 
uh, have an, an Ehrenman connection on, on, on E. We have a decomposition of the tangent of E in a horizontal distribution and a vertical distribution. So uh, any vector field can has a decomposition in an horizontal part and a vertical part. Uh, this, the, same is, uh, the same has for multivectors in general. In particular, for if Q is, is a bivector field, Q has the following the comp uh, the compos degrading the composition. We have a degrading induced by the vertical in the normal components. And this means that locally, this part is the wedge product of, of two vertical parts. This part is the wedge product of, of, of a vertical vector or vectorial vector field with a horizontal. And this is a, the wedge product to horizontal. Also, the operators has a, a, a degrading decomposition in general, as, as was proved by Weisman, the Lichnerovi operator has this decomposition. De but under the hypothesis that the connection is Poisson, we have this. And this uh, uh, consequence is very important in what follows. Also, we can prove that the average of the horizontal leaf of a vector fields is exactly the horizontal leaf with respect to the Hanaibari connections. Uh, if gamma is Poisson, the Hanaibari connection is also Poisson. And the horizontal distributions uh, with, with respect to the Hanaibari connections is G invariant. And so now we have a G invariant decompositions of, of the tangent. And this is the most important uh, consequence for me that these two vector fields differ from uh, Hamiltonian vector fields. No? Uh, uh, by this formula. So uh, I want to present the, the geometric results. For every gamma horizontal to cocycle Q, the cohomology class of Q can be represented by a G invariant to cocycle. No? This is a, an analogous of the result that we have from the Ranko homology with, G, with a G action. No? And, uh, but we can prove uh, by hand, pr practically. And the idea is as follows. Uh, we consider the, the degraded decomposition of Q with respect to the Hanaibari connections. And using only uh, properties of the Scotton bracket, we can, uh, by straightforward computations, that, uh, we don't go into details here, we can prove that Q has the following form. And the average is given by this. And this, is, this part is a horizontal vector field, which is invariant, because the Hanniberry connection is invariant. And so this uh, took a cycle. And as delta P has, has this form, it results that this by vector field is also a cycle of P. No? And we have the result, no? where B, where double B and the average of B are vector fields, which can be uh, expressed in terms of Q or, and its uh, decomposition with respect to the Hanniberry connection. No? Uh, as corollary, Q and, and the average of Q has the same cohomology class. And we have the following theorem for normalization of this bivector field. No? Let C epsilon P plus epsilon Q be a horizontal deformation of P. No? A, a, 
The pullback of psi epsilon along the flow of the vector field B minus the average of double B, the vector fields that uh, showed you show with, uh, in the previous slice, brings C epsilon to the following by vector field. And this vector fields is the invariant because the averaging is a projector of the, the invariant space. Moreover, if we take the pullback with respect to the vector field double U, we bring a psi epsilon into, uh, per, and in, into a deformation of pi, but this vector, this by vector uh, is also invariant and horizontal with respect to the Hanoi-Berry connection. No? At this moment, uh, we can ask where were the adiabatic systems? No? That because the, this, this are, uh, these are uh, geometric results. Uh, well, we apply these this, this results to find a, f a formal norms for Hamiltonian, uh, for Hamiltonian system or adi adiabatic time. Uh, again, let ABP be a Poisson fiber bundle with vertical de de distribution B given by the kernel of the tangent mandle pi. Uh, let C epsilon uh, be an epsilon dependent Poisson structure. Uh, uh, here we are assuming that the bracket uh, the scotton bracket of Q with cell is equals to zero. Now, for a function f, we consider these systems. And we say that systems about is of adiabatic time if there exists an horizontal distribution H such that Q is horizontal by vector field. Huh? This is a generalization of the, of the uh, example that presented in, in my review of adiabatic systems. Now, uh, we must, uh, I want to remark that if f is a G-invariant function, uh, the Hamiltonian vector field associated to f can be told as a perturbation of this G-invariant vector field. So, we are interested in, uh, in find a, a normal form for this perturbed vector field. Huh? Uh, let me give a, a, definitions, a definition. Given a perturbed vector field, uh, a, a, a 0 plus epsilon A1, where A0 is a G invariant, we say that uh, this, vector, this perturbed vector field admits a normal form or, of order k if there exists tau epsilon such that the, the pullback of the perturbed vector field along tau epsilon uh, brings these vector fields to these vector fields where all these vector fields are G invariant. So the problem is when can find such transformations. It is well known that phi G is equal to S1 always exists a normalization transformation on any order, and the result is due to Arnold, Neistat, Cushman, uh, Borobiev, and me uh, give a free coordination of, of these results, because Cushman mainly have these results for Hamiltonian, uh, for perturbed Hamiltonian vector fields. Now, uh, we have the following result. Assume that f is a uh, G-invariant function on A, and this, the slow fast Hamiltonian vector field, here I'm assuming that there exists a, 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 a horizontal distribution such that Q is horizontal. We say that the, the Hamiltonian vector field admits a normalization transformation given by this form. Here, is the vector field double, double U that I showed uh, previously. There exists, if and only if, 
we can f I can find a smooth function S which satisfies these homological equations. No? Is this uh, general for any uh, group G? This yes, compact connected. The, the, the point here is that we, trans we translate the problem of fine normal forms or vector fields in a problem with functions. Now the problem is if for any group, I, I, I'm able to solve these equations. If for, for any group in general, I don't know. I, don't, I, I have the answer if g is equal to s1. Uh, if such transform, if, if such function exists, uh, this is the, the first order normal forms, and in this first order, and, and this, this g invariant normal forms, I can uh, quickly uh, uh, see the the horizontal path and the vertical path. No? Uh, let me. Well, the, the the proof of this of this theorem is based on basic properties of Lie derivatives and its flows. This almost Job's computation. Practically, I have to use this identity and make by direct computation. We have this, and uh, I want this form. Then it, it is easy to see that uh, that is equivalent to this set, this set of equation. Uh, this is uh, for us an, an, an upper problem. How how can we solve the these equations for any compact group? Uh, for the case that the group is S one, uh, also in the particular case. Well, well, only in the particular case where the uh, periodic the, the S1 action is induced by the unperturbed vector field, uh, we define this, this vector field, which is the infinitesimal generator of the S1 action only, and the solutions of, the, of, this, of this homological equation is given by, by this formula. And this is all the, the reference. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you for listening. <laughs>